one of the stories hasn't seen it, and I don't want to spoil it for the rest of you guys. So just make sure that you guys watch Hateful Eight. It ends just like every other Quentin Tarantino movie. Spoiler alert. All right, so my number one Quentin Tarantino film, my favorite, my top favorite Quentin Tarantino film is... And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. You guessed it. <laughs> you guessed it. Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction, by far to me, has to be the best Quentin Tarantino, well, my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie. Uh, of course, I, I would say it's one of the longest Quentin Tarantino movies. I think it rounds out about two hours and 15 minutes or something like that, but a uh, very good movie. Samuel L. Jackson plays a hitman. He and John Travolta t- play two hitmen for this guy, Marcellus. Uh, Marcellus Wiley, or Marce- not Marcellus Wiley, but whatever the hell, it- Wallace, Wallace. There we go, Marcellus Wallace. Um, I shouldn't be, I should not be spoiling this. You guys should have seen, uh, uh, uh um, uh, Pulp Fiction by now. I mean, you guys have had to have seen Pulp Fiction by now. Out of all the movies that I've said, uh, of course, on uh this this list of my favorite Quentin Tarantino movies, by far you had to have seen Pulp Fiction by now. Uh, like I said, John Travolta, uh, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, Uma Thurman, Bruce Willis, Tim Roth, uh, 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 Christopher Christopher Walken. You know what I mean? He was in the movie. He had a slight cameo. Ving Rhames. You know what I mean? Amanda Plummer. Her and Tim Roth, they played um, uh, uh, two bank robbers. But uh, we'll get into that. Well, we're not going to get into that. You guys just got to go see the movie. Very good movie, man. Quentin Tarantino outdid himself on that one. Uh, and just like every other Quentin Tarantino movie, it starts off in an awkward way. It kind of like starts at the end, goes back to the beginning, then goes into the middle, then goes back to the beginning, then goes to the end. And you just don't know where to 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 to, to end off with. But you have to watch the movie in its entirety to completely understand where he's coming from. I think I can slightly relate to Quentin Tarantino for some weird reason. Now, I think I think he's slightly dyslexic, like, probably like me. I don't know. But the way that he does his movies is, is very intriguing. I love it. I love it. So, of course, to round out my list of uh, Give Me Ten Today, well, I cut it short. It's five. But um, my top my, my top five, man, out of that one, out of that top five, the number one is Pulp Fiction. Yes, Pulp Fiction. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So, that being said, ladies and gentlemen, you already know what time it is. It is me. He is I, and I am him. I am he that they call the Alpha Male. Man, in the next segment, we definitely got to get into some more football talk. It is football season. Oh, man, I can't I can't wait. I'm excited. I love it. So, y'all sit there. Sit tight. Y'all strap in, man. It's Alpha Male Sports. fitness summertime is here now let's be honest you found every excuse not to work out you probably put it off each week telling yourself i got time well time is up and if you're looking for a gym that is effective and motivating to get you to your goal then you have no other choice than to choose effect fitness effect fitness is an intensive boot camp experience like no other if you're looking to increase your personal power recognize your own strength and cultivate your mind and body then effect fitness is the boot camp for you are they downtown where are they located effect fitness is located in the heart of atlanta at one baltimore place northwest atlanta georgia 30308 i have a crazy schedule really and 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 i'm a morning person i like coffee so i I really need a gym that's going to be open before the first waffle drops at waffle house Effect Fitness has morning classes Monday through Friday at 5.30 a.m. and 6.30 a.m. But I work a 9 to 5, and I had a gym that's going to be there the moment I get out of traffic. You know how this Atlanta traffic is. Effect Fitness also has afternoon classes Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m., 5.30 p.m., 6.30 p.m., and 7.30 p.m. This is so exciting, but are they open on the weekends? Yes, Effect Fitness is also open during the weekend with classes on Saturday at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. and Sunday before you go to church at 9 a.m. And there you have it. 
What Other Boot Camp is open seven days of the week with classes in the mornings and in the evenings to help get you to your goal. Like we said, if you're looking to increase your personal power, recognize your own strength, and cultivate your mind and body, then Effect Fitness is the boot camp for you. you, 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 you. Effect Fitness. At my signal, unleash hell. We like sports and we don't care who knows. We are back. Final segment of Alpha Male Sports, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, want to ju- take the time once again to uh, remind you guys that this is brought to you by, well, Alpha Male Sports is brought to you by none other than the great people over at Effect Fitness, Reggie and Dooley, located at one Baltimore, one Baltimore way down in Atlanta, Georgia. Make sure that you guys go and check them out, man. I'm telling you, this Saturday is going down. I have a they will have a live DJ in all of all of the sessions this upcoming Saturday, so make sure that you guys go ahead and take your opportunity to go down there, check these guys out. Fellas, it is a lot of beautiful ladies there. I might not be able to, to date any of them or talk to any of them because I, I am taken, but I'm telling you, man, y'all got to get down there and holler at these females. I'm telling them they're beautiful as I'll get out. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, Reggie and Dooley, Effect Fitness, y'all make sure that y'all check them out. Uh... I'm telling you, summer's almost over. Football season's already here. August is literally next week. You know, it's too late to try to get a summer body, so might as well get started on next year's, okay? Now, in this final segment of Alpha Male Sports, we're just going to go ahead and just chop it up and talk about football. We're just going to talk about football. We're going to talk about all the news and notes and, and things that have gone on in football this past week or or what's just, just what's been going on in football lately. Um, of course, we all know that... Uh, uh, um, that uh, What's his name? Fitz, Fitz, yeah, I'm sorry, Ryan Fitz, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Of course, he just got paid by the New York Jets one year, uh, uh, got a one year, ex- well, not necessarily an extension, but they signed him to a one year tenure where he is get he is getting paid fully, fully guaranteed, fully, fully guaranteed. So very, very, very excited to see about that, man. Major shouts out to him and the Jets, making sure that he gets paid in the game green. But that's not why I brought that up. Uh, I brought that up because, uh, of course, it being officially the start of football season and already somebody is starting some shiggity. Uh, Brandon Marshall, you know, he went ahead and reached out to um, to Antonio Brown. Y'all take a listen to what Brandon Marshall had to say. Hey, B, man, I see you boys driving uh, those Rolls Royces to Cam. Let me show you how we do it in New York, man. We ride it's Porsches, bro. Talk about going fast. Hey, let's race for pinks, bro, any day. Or, you know what I'm saying, if you have more receiving yards than me, I'll give you the Porsche. If I have more receiving yards than you, then I'll, you got to give me the Rolls Royce. Check it out. Now let's break this down, uh, Brandon Marshall. Uh, of course, last season, uh, Antonio Brown was one of the best um, wide receivers in the NFL. One of the best. Uh, the best wide receiver in the NFL, of course, was Julio Jones, 136 receptions, 1,800 receiving yards, um, uh, eight touchdowns, uh, 13 receiving yards per reception. Uh, so, you know, 13 yards per reception for uh, for Julio Jones. I brought him in there because I don't want nobody to forget it. But, of course, uh, Brandon Marshall laid down a challenge to Antonio Brown for cars. <laughs> okay. Uh, very interesting. But let's go ahead and look at the stats, if you will. Okay. So, uh, with that being said, Brandon Marshall last season, 109 receptions, 1,502 receiving yards, 14 receiving touchdowns. He was ranked number four amongst all wide receivers. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about Antonio Brown, 136 receptions, 1,800 yards receiving, uh, 10 receiving touchdowns. He was number two behind uh, none other than the Julio Jones. So, uh, if I were to, if I were to really look at it, you know what I mean? I, I'm not necessarily sure because in all facets of this, um, it seems like Antonio Brown is better than Brandon Marshall. Uh, Antonio Brown, even as far as cars is concerned, uh, Antonio Brown outnumbers Brandon Marshall by a hundred thousand dollars. Of course, the Rolls Royce costs about a hundred thousand dollars more than the Porsche. So I don't know. It seems slightly unfair. I mean, I, I think Antonio Brown might want another car. So if he would like to take the challenge, he would. Uh, and actually, he did. He uh, actually told TMZ, he was like, if he's really serious, call me. I'll gladly accept. But don't internet it. Don't put this in the interweb, the intranet. 
So uh, very interesting to see how that is, man. Uh, Brandon Marshall, uh, you know, uh, not too prone to. I mean, well, he's not. Uh, he's not shy. I would say, uh, the thirty-year-old Brandon Marshall. He wants to, uh, I guess, in Jets fashion, kind of get the season started off in the right way. Kind of start some stuff. Kind of make some waves. So I, I, I like. I like that. I like that Brandon Marshall is kind of issuing a challenge. I don't know if Brandon Marshall would be able to. Uh, actually like you know really challenge you know Antonio Brown I think Antonio Brown will walk away with this and a new car hands down but if Antonio Brown is up for taking that challenge then let's see you know let's see it's very interesting so uh moving on from that you know last season the New Orleans Saints uh had a down year you know going seven and nine uh overall uh, uh three and three in the NFC South uh, and, and really the way that things are shaping up, the Saints need to make some improvements uh, or they can really be left behind. I mean, let's be honest. You got uh, Cam Newton uh, really just running rough shot over in Carolina. Uh, you have a young uh, Jameis Winston who is reaching his second year in Tampa Bay. Uh, Matt Ryan here in Atlanta, you know, I'm not going to necessarily put him. I, I don't know where to put Matt Ryan, honestly, but um uh, it does seem like it is the youth versus the old in the NFC uh, in the NFC South. It seems like Tampa Bay and Carolina has time on their side, while Atlanta and uh, New Orleans uh, definitely have some questions to be answered at the quarterback position. But of course, nonetheless, uh, the captain of the New Orleans Saints, Drew Brees, who is 37 years old, says that he sees himself playing well into his 40s. So, you know, I ask everybody out there, and I want you guys to comment in the chat, do you see Drew Brees uh, beating Father Time? Can Drew Brees beat out Father Time and, 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 and play into his 40s? And not only just play into his 40s, but be effective. Drew Brees actually said, I don't see any reason why I can't play uh, at the highest level for the next five years at minimum. Uh, listen, I'm not naive. I'm not looking five years from now. I'm really looking at each and every year, understanding I got to prove it. I got to prove that I'm the best guy to lead this team. But yeah, uh, Breeze said this, um, of course, after his first day at camp, uh, him coming back uh, for the uh, New Orleans Saints. Uh, I, I, I don't want Drew Breeze to be that good. I'm just saying, I wouldn't want a 40-year-old guy beating the Atlanta Falcons like a drum. I just wouldn't want that to happen. I truly just would not want that to happen, mainly because it would definitely just make us look bad. Uh, uh, of course, us being rivals, us being the Atlanta Falcons rivaling the New Orleans Saints, I just would not like to see Drew Brees. I mean, just, I mean, just clock us each and every single Sunday. Goodness gracious. But nonetheless, he says that he's able to play at a high level, uh, at the age of 37. So with that being said, you know, let's see. I, I like to see how Drew Brees does. 37 years old. In three years, he'll be 40. So let's see. Now, in Barrera, Ohio, uh, the Cleveland Browns begin camp. Uh, and, of course, one special guest says that he is a changed man. Uh, have we seen the last of Josh Gordon's off-the-field issues? I do not know. I'll just have to say that. Uh, of course, after... Um, his one-year ban from the NFL, Josh Gordon, does return to the Cleveland Browns. Uh, he says that he's a different man, uh, willing and ready to accept uh, all help and support from others. Uh, now, Josh Gordon, of course, was speaking to the uh, reporters and speaking to the media after, of course, the very first day of Browns training camp. If you haven't changed over a period of time, that's a bad thing. I think me standing here is a testament that most people might not see it that way. That just comes out with the territory of me being who I am, considered my, considering my past. This is, of course, Gordon saying this to uh, the media. Um, Josh Gordon, I, I'll say this much. I remember about two years ago when the Atlanta Falcons played the Browns in the Georgia Dome. Josh Gordon, I swear, ripped the Atlanta Falcons to shreds. I mean, literally ripped the Atlanta Falcons to shreds by himself. Uh, and, and really, he, he, he possesses the ability to be a breakout wide receiver in the NFL, but he just cannot seem to shake the off-the-field issues. Um, now, needless to say, Josh Gordon has had a laundry list of issues. Gordon was suspended two games in 2013. Um, when he still led the league in receiving yards, then 11 games in 2014. Um, 
and then uh, he was actually suspended all of 2016. Um, when he was spending, he was.